Welcome to Disaffected Podcast. I'm Kevin Hurley filling in for Josh Slocum, and today we're joined by Fred Sargent. Fred Sargent was one of the original uh, members, one of the first members of the uh, uh, Stonewall Movement, of the Stonewall Riots, and uh, Fred, you can explain more about this, but I think uh, I think you were uh, instrumental in the um, starting of the uh, Pride Parades, too. It was the Christopher Street Parade, I think. Can you just talk a little bit about, um, you know, your history and uh, your work with uh, with all of that? Well, uh, I had moved to New York when I was uh, in my late teens and, and uh, quickly became involved in gay rights activism uh, pre-Stonewall. And uh, I had uh, joined a group called the Homophile Youth Movement. Uh, it eventually became vice chairman and was partners with the founder of the group, uh, Craig Rodwell, who was a gay rights pioneer. Uh, Craig had opened up the first uh, lesbian and gay bookshop in the world. And uh, I worked there as the manager. Uh, the, the Stonewall event occurred one night when we were walking home uh, after dinner with friends. And uh, uh, we, we happened upon uh, the activity just as it was starting to happen. The police had raided the bar and they were about to start bringing prisoners out. And, and that's where we arrived and, and uh, uh, things really started to uh, hit the fan when the, when the police started dragging people out of the bar. People started throwing coins and rocks at the police and, and uh, we stayed throughout those nights, uh, every night during the week, during the riots. And from that, we, uh, we began organizing uh, what eventually became the Christopher Street Liberation Day March, uh, now known as uh, Pride. Right. You were one of the first organizers of the Pride Parade, that's fair to say? Yes. Uh, Craig had conceived of the idea, and uh, myself and uh, two lesbians, Linda Rhodes and uh, Ellen Broidy, uh, were also the, we were the core group that proposed it. So that brings us to why you're on the show today, really. And that is that um, you, I, I, I believe you said that you attended the, you attend Burlington's Pride Parade every year. And I mean, Burlington, Vermont, um, you were a Vermonter um, and you were at the Pride Parade in Burlington, which uh, well, they do it in September in Vermont, which is yes. not like, uh, you know, what other states do. Um, what can you explain to me what happened when you arrived there? What is this all about? Well, I, I first went to the Burlington Pride Parade last year, and it was to protest again. Um, they, they didn't really react to my protests last year, uh, but this year uh, they certainly did. And uh, I guess seeing that I was becoming a fixture, uh, they, they wanted to address that. What was uh, your protest? Uh, it was a very simple sign, two-sided. One side said, gay, not queer. Uh, there are many of us in the same-sex rights movement uh, that object to the use of the term queer. Um, queer can literally include anyone, straight, gay, uh, or whatever other kind of identity someone wishes to adopt. That's not something that same-sex rights advocates uh, want to be a part of. And uh, th there are many organizations now forming around the world uh, to fight exactly that sort of thing and to demand a return to addressing uh, same-sex rights uh, and not have be supplanted by gender ide ideology. So it was just one sign, small sign, and you uh, were... One side mm -hmm. saying that, and the other side uh, had a uh, one of those round circles with a red line through it, and it said blackface and woman face. Okay. That was the sign that really set people off. <laughs> uh, I see no difference between blackface or doing woman face. I, I find them both equally odious. By woman face, you mean either trans or drag? Can you tell me what woman yes. face means? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. that's exactly what it means. Okay. So you were out there before the parade started. You were holding your sign. Uh, what happened? Well, one group went by. Uh, it's, it's a group known as Outright Vermont. And years ago, they had done what I thought were some good things here in the community. Uh, but in, in more recent times, they too have become more involved in gender identity 
uh, supplanting same-sex rights activism. Uh, the, the, in fact, the Pride Parade itself is put on by the um, Pride Center of Vermont, and uh, they're deeply homophobic. Uh, they, they uh, uh, on their education page, they describe the word gay as being a term of erasure, and it's not a term that they recommend I didn't anyone know, use. I didn't know that. They're, they're describing that on their own webpage? The, on their own, yeah, on their website. <laughs> it's under their education section. Interesting. Um, all right, so you were standing out there. The parade begins. You're holding your sign. What's next? Uh, one one fellow that was waving a trans flag, uh, he saw my sign, and, uh, you know, I wasn't paying much attention to any individual, and he reached out and grabbed it as he went by. And uh, I, I'm, I'm elderly and disabled, uh, so uh, it, with a little bit of adrenaline, I was able to keep up with him and... and uh, uh, was able to get my sign back. Uh, I went back to the same place I had been, and more people of the group and following groups from outright Vermont and others uh, started to come out of those the, the march, and they that's when they swarmed me and surrounded me. Um, it went on for about 20 minutes, a half an hour. Uh, people were trying to block my sign. They were slapping me on the back of the head. They poured coffee on me. Uh, they poked me. Um, everybody kind of slid up against me. I couldn't move one way or the other. And uh, when I did try to move, somebody would yell, you're hurting me, you know, as though an elderly man with a cane is, is somehow capable of hurting a young person. Um, uh, eventually, um, after a couple of attempts to steal the sign from me and injuring me, leaving bruises on me and, and a laceration on my hand uh, from one woman, uh, the group knocked me to the ground. And, and that's one of the pictures that's come out of this. Uh, me on the ground, uh, atop my signs, uh, surrounded by trans flags. Okay. For podcast listeners, um, you can't see this. Uh, for those who are listening in the Discord right now i don't see a actual text room for the discord so i'm going to throw some of these pictures that we're talking about in the uh, general channel and video pictures and video uh coming up in the general channel right now um, if you haven't subscribed to discord you can do that right now um all right so what happens next well uh, i i some people help me up to my feet and and uh by then, the, the parade had ended, and the group broke up, um, and uh, I rested on a bench for a bit. Um, my belongings that had been behind me had been, all been taken. Uh, they took a chair, a, a, a new L.L. Bean shirt, my bags, my leaflets, uh, wristbands, uh, my even, even my umbrella. And um, all told, when we totaled it up at home, it was over six hundred dollars worth of property that that they stole. So I did listen. I, I did listen and uh, watch these clips. And um, what what really strikes me is they had no idea who you were. Um, you know, here we have the founder of or one of the founders of the original uh, gay pride parade and a Stonewall veteran. And I think you 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 had a hat that said Stonewall veteran. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I wear that from time to time when I go to events. And they asked you to leave. What was it they asked yes. you? They asked you to uh, leave. They demanded that I leave. Hmm. Well, you know, I think, you know, this is this is interesting because this is really sort of you know, it's symbolic of a lot of other things that are happening, right? Um they're not paying attention to they're not paying attention to history. Uh, nothing, you know, they were all young people, um, for the most part, I, as far as what it looked like yeah, in the with, video. with one exception. With one exception. So they're all young people. Um, someone did come up, uh, you had one person, uh, sort of, uh, stick up for you, uh, came up to the crowd, uh, and said, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're assaulting this man. Uh, what was the response of everyone else? Uh, they were supporting her. Uh, it, what you can see on the larger tape 
is her earlier on pouring coffee on my head. Mm -hmm. I presume she was one of the people slapping me on the back of the head. But everyone, everyone in attendance at this parade did nothing to come to your rescue, right? Uh, that's right. No one. What, what do you think? I mean, what do you think of that? You know, and this is, it's so bizarre. Um, why is that? Here you are, 70, holding a sign, under attack, being swarmed, and no one comes to your defense? That's, that's quite a thing, isn't it? Why? I, I have no idea what's happened to people and why young people feel that assaulting an elderly, disabled person is the right side of history. Hmm. No matter what that person's beliefs are. What do you, what do you, now I know probably, you know, you've been over this a million times, but I'm going to ask you just once more. What, what, how, how, how do you pin down their beliefs? What is it that they believe different than what you believe? We talked about the, um, you know, what the meaning of your sign. Um, but what is it that they believe so strongly that it's worth pushing you to the ground, pouring coffee on your face? Well, they, you see, these are people that believe that, or they would like others to believe that they're the victims in society. Uh, transgender people are among the safest demographic in the United States. Uh, despite what what you hear about Trans Day of Remembrance for all the murders and such, if you're a woman or you're a police officer, you're three times as likely to be murdered for who, who you are than a trans person is. Mm -hmm. Yet society, for some reason, has bought their story that they are the most oppressed in this country. And it's simply untrue. And it's not just the higher level story, is it? It's the details. It's the rewriting right. of history. Um, I, we're getting a little bit away from the event itself, but um, you know, this is something you have a lot of experience with, and you've you, you've been following this for years. I've been following you follow this for years. Um, can you just go over this sort of rewriting of history? It is not uncommon to hear a trans person say that, oh, transgen uh, uh, the Stonewall riots, uh, you owe the Stonewall riots to a transgender woman or transgender women saved the day or started the Stonewall riots. I don't know exactly what they say, but it's always different, right? Right. And, it, and, and it's wrong on so many levels. One of the people that they point to as being the person who created the modern gay rights movement, which I would dispute uh, factually just based on the the written histories, not just my own words, but uh, the, the, the words of historians. Uh, the person that they credit most is Marshall Johnson. Uh, Malcolm Michaels was his given name, and it was the name that he was commonly arrested under. So I, I often use his, his name, Malcolm Michaels. Uh, it's not dead naming somebody to use the name that they use to identify themselves. Uh, Malcolm Michaels was a, a career criminal, very mentally ill, was committed a number of times to Bellevue, and eventually received Social Security for his mental disability. And I know that as a fact because I knew the man that helped him through the process to get his Social Security, uh, Bob Kohler. Uh, and, and he wasn't even there that night. He showed up about an hour after things started, and as he eventually fessed up to uh, years later, when he got there, the bar was already aflame. Um, the other person that, that is credited is uh, Ray Rivera, also known as Sylvia Rivera. And uh, he was never even there that night. He was up in Bryant Park, passed out on a bench from doing too many drugs. Uh, they're credited with creating what was called, um, oh, I can't think of the name now, um, a star house. And uh, it was supposed to be a, a, a home for um, homeless LGB youth. Uh, nothing could be further from the truth. It was on Second Street in the East Village, and uh, it was owned by a member of the mob, but he was in jail at the time. And they went in and squatted in an apartment for eight months 
They had no utilities, no telephone. And in order to stay there and do your drugs there, you had to work on the street as a sex worker. Uh, they never, I, I did check with the city of New York and tried to find if they ever registered as a social service charity. Uh, that never happened. Uh, it, it's, an, it's a myth that's made out of whole cloth. And when you try to straighten the story, what, re, what response have you been met with whenever you do try to straighten the story? Um, people refuse to acknowledge that they don't have the facts, that they can't prove me wrong. And uh, the stories persist. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Kevin and Josh work themselves to the bone to bring you dark and disturbing content every week. There are starving listeners overseas who get no podcasts at all. Show appropriate gratitude today by making a donation at patreon.com forward slash disaffected or at subscribestar.com forward slash disaffected. Do it for mother. There's a new perk for disaffected subscribers, and it's a good one. Patreon and Subscribestar donors now have instant access to our backstage Discord server. Join multiple topic-based chat rooms, 24-7 voice chat, and even a virtual events main stage for hosted conversations and backstage podcast recording sessions. It's not Twitter, and you don't have to pretend Bruce Jenner's vagina is real. Welcome back. Um, we are here with Fred Sargent. Fred Sargent was the um, one of the original founders of the uh, Pride Parade. And um, what was it called? What was the original parade called, Fred? Uh, Christopher Street Liberation Day. Christopher Street Liberation Day. As well as uh, he was there for the uh, Stonewall riots, the original Stonewall riots. What have you done since that time, Fred? Well, uh, I, I left New York in, in uh, 1971. Uh, I didn't care for the city and moved back up to Connecticut. And uh, uh, a friend of mine uh, convinced me to to uh, apply to join the police department there. Uh, I, I did and, and uh, eventually rose to the rank of lieutenant. Uh, my my um, interest had to do with conflict resolution. I organized and, uh, and led the first hostage recovery unit in the state of Connecticut. Um, and uh, after retiring from there, I um, moved up to uh, Provincetown, and I worked for several years as a uh, town volunteer, and I, I generally chaired boards and committees, uh, and I'm particularly proud of the work I did on our hate crimes plan, um, which had to do with uh, a, a real epidemic of hate crimes that uh, Provincetown was going to uh, going through at the time that the uh, the rate of hate crimes was the greatest in Provincetown of any other municipality in the state. Um, so that that was that was something that was a, a joy to work on, and I did do some work on uh, community policing and and uh, hiring a new police chief and that sort of thing. Uh, things that I was able to utilize my my previous skills on. Um, so I was planning on playing some videos, but because of this technical problem with dialing the phone out, I cannot play the videos. Uh, these videos, I believe we'll probably have them in this week's uh, Sunday show. So listeners tune in this week, um, this weekend rather. And um, let's, let's just go back to the uh, event itself and then we'll wrap it up. Um, what, so, you know, one thing, you know, when I was watching the video, it looked like they were mostly you were you were there holding signs. Uh, yeah. You were standing alone holding signs. Um, yes. And they were covering your signs with rainbow and transgender colored transgender color. Is that a color? Hmm. So they were they were covering your sign with these um, parasols, with signs, with flags. And you were moving back and forth to try to make your sign be seen. Yeah. Yeah. When they would let me, if in the video, you can see I was, I was blocked on many occasions. And, and, uh, uh, I understand now that one, one person is making the complaint that I elbowed him or her, or whatever. And, uh, well, another woman was be, making the complaint that you hit her with a stick. I, I, I was pressed on all sides. Well, you, they also said you were hitting, elbow. Yeah, they also said you were hitting. They were hitting. You were hitting them with a stick. 
I think there was a girl who said he's hitting me with a stick. Yeah, that that was the pole that my signs were on that they had ripped off. Uh, you know, I didn't I didn't throw my my pole away. I just held on to it. It was on the side of the the sign. You can see it in the video. And in my other hand was my cane. What repercussions will there be for these people? This was I mean, was this assault? Did this cross a legal line? I, oh, it was definitely an assault. Um, I, I had the bruises. I had the laceration on my hand that were made by, I, I think you have the video with a mm -hmm. woman in it trying to um, steal my sign, which is, you know, an attempted at larceny. Um, she was also seen earlier in the video pouring coffee on my head, which is, again, another assault. And what's the follow-up then with that? Did the do anything about it? I, I don't know. I can't say. You did call the police. You filed a report? I filed a report, and I'm, well, not filed a report, but uh, the, the uh, hospital did, and uh, I've called them and left a message with the investigating officer. She's never returned my call. You sent the videos to them? Uh, they haven't seen the video as far as I know, but they may have seen it now online. Mm -hmm. Originally, we wanted to give this all to them, but with them not reaching out to me after uh, I had contacted them, uh, we went ahead. Ellen says, thank you for sharing your real story, Fred. I've read nothing about the coffee anywhere. You're the first You're the first person that's hearing about Outright Vermont. You know, Outright, I think, probably used to do good work. But um, that's right. they are very young children. And when I think of very young children in what has now become, you know, sort of a radical activist group, um, it looks like a uh, brainwash to me. Yes, very much so. Mm -hmm. Ellen says, have they condemned any of the assault? I think what she means is the Pride Center or outright. Has, have they... No, they've, they've been silent about the entire thing. We've been monitoring that. Uh, what they are doing, uh, the, uh, a group called Pride Vermont, is they're trying to say that nothing really happened and pointing to a video where you can actually see that first person stealing my sign. He's another person that since there's a video of it, I would like the police to pursue identifying through outright Vermont so that he can be arrested as well. Hmm. It's kind of a twilight zone episode. Uh, you That's know, right. thinking about it, it's, you know, here, you know, just, uh, I'm just going to say this again. We have the founder, you know, in perspective here, the founder, a one of the founders of the first pride parade, the Christopher street liberation parade. Um, That's right. and then, you know, which became the pride parade, which is the event that they were at. This, this, this was the event, right? Um, one of the original, I don't know if attendees is the right word, but you were there for the Stonewall riots. Um, and here we are, how many years later? And they're telling you, you have to leave. They're assaulting you physically, verbally, while no one in the area, no one in attendance of the parade did anything. One, one guy did, uh, but no one else did anything to uh, come to your defense. All right. Well, Fred, thanks so much. I really appreciate it. You're quite welcome. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you.